and class is back in session with another Florida painting and but this time I'm using my oil paints and uh, we're gonna paint a landscape basically a sunset landscape so uh, let me first start you off with the colors that I am using I'm using a uh, cad yellow yellow ochre alizarin crimson ultramarine blue a little bit of burnt sienna burnt umber and titanium white now I'm using liquin original liquin is an alkyd which will help uh, the drying time for the painting it's going to speed up drying so even while I'm painting this it's going to eventually start to tack up enough that I will be able to add additional layers on top of this painting so I could almost do it a la prima meaning on one sitting but in this particular painting I'm gonna have it done in two sessions actually because the paint was starting to move around too much and I was like ah eh, let me just do this in two stages so as you can see here I'm just using cad yellow and yellow ochre um, and you know sometimes a little bit of alizarin crimson to uh, Put down the paint to put down the yellows wherever I see them on uh, on the reference photo, which you should see at the bottom right corner of your screen. That's the reference photo that I'm going off of. Now, just because I have a reference photo there does not mean I have to be exact or true to the photo. All right, it's just there as a reference. Okay, I can add, subtract change things around the way I want to don't be a slave to your reference photos that's a, that's a big mistake so sometimes you just gotta use a little bit of intuition a little bit of your imagination change things around to make it to where you like it so as you can see here I'm mixing up this uh, gray down purple and you could gray down your purple by either using a little bit of yellow or yellow a little bit of yellow ochre and uh, to gray that to gray it down okay because yellow and purple are you know complementary colors and uh, they next to each other they complement each other of course but when you put them together they gray each other down and you know if you put them purely together then you will get a brownish color so right now I'm just putting colors where they need to be without really blending so much yet I don't, I, I don't want to muddy my colors too much because after that it just it gets to be a mess and you know it's hard to get back from that so you just got to be careful where you can blend all right you just can't blend everywhere at, at the same time here and plus the whole idea of this initially is just to get the first layer down all right the approximate colors down and put it thin all right remember when you work with oil you want to start out thin and work your way thicker with less medium towards the end of the painting or should I say subsequent layers so believe it or not I'm actually working pretty thin right now so and uh, as you can see here it's thin enough that I'm able to go over with this uh, grayish blue on top of this cloud here uh, without muddying my colors too much because I'm using I'm going a little bit thicker and I'm changing my colors a little bit because also why I made it darker towards the top there is uh, that cloud it's a little bit further away at the top it's a little bit further away from the Sun but yet that cloud is the and it's in its entirety it's actually pretty close to the cloud so uh, to the Sun so it would be a little bit darker at the top and towards the bottom it'll probably be a more uh, of a lighter color so uh, now at this point now that I got pretty much the colors that uh, I want I could start adding little by little a little bit thicker and thicker of paint okay and I'm still using liquid as, as my medium throughout this uh, painting session you could use liquid on each subsequent layer okay even though it's a, a drying agent liquid can be used on each layer so and how fast does it dry or how fast does it tack up I will say that when I use liquid and I put a thin coat of paint th that that coat will start tacking up within I'd say 30 minutes to an hour 
and will be dry by morning, completely dry by morning, if not even a little bit earlier. Okay, it dries pretty quickly. And then you could go back over that painting again with your next stage using liquid again. Okay, liquid's formulated like that. You could use it on every stage of the painting. So, or if you don't want the painting to dry and you want it to keep it workable, you could use linseed oil after you finished uh, the first stage with, uh, with the liquid, uh, with your liquid original. The next stage, you could start introducing linseed oil to the painting without having any effect on it. So it's all up to you. I use liquid throughout the whole entire painting to, to help with drying time so I could you know get up to the next level here. So now for the darks, I use a lot. My main recipe for darks is usually always ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson. And depending if I'm doing dark uh, trees or foliage whatsoever, I will use a cad yellow medium to that mixture. Not very much, just very little to keep it nice and dark. But if I want a nice like chromatic black, I will do ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and I would use burnt umber to get a really nice dark so here i just varied it a little bit when i did uh, these grasses here that you see in that, that dark area right here so and i'm keeping it thin as well and uh so now i'm just making some of the mixture to start painting uh the reflection of the sky into the water now remember these are only approximate colors they're not the exact color the final colors I'm just putting an approximate and I'm putting it thin so that if I want to go back over it throughout the first uh, stage, I can. But the thing is, you're going to have to layer a thicker, um, a thicker layer of paint okay, without using so much liquid in it this time. Because what happened is going to kind of activate the, the base of uh, the base, the base layer because liquid is a solvent has solvents in it so but otherwise another recipe you can use to make your own uh instead if you don't want to use liquid you could use 50 percent uh gamsol or odorless mineral spirit and 50 percent linseed oil that's a mixture that you know it's been used throughout time and you could do your whole painting with just that mixture alone if you want your mixture to dry a little bit faster to make the paint dry a little bit faster just increase the amount of dryer, meaning either your uh, odorless mineral spirits, like instead of putting 50%, you can make it uh, 60, 70% um, Gamsol or odorless mineral spirit, and then 30% linseed oil. But if you want more oil, then you just do the opposite, just simple as that, and it will help with the drying time as well. But because liquid is very uh, consistent in its mixture, I just use that and I have it available and I want to use it before it goes bad on me. So, so now I'm just going back over the clouds. Uh, the paint had time to tack up a little bit. I have enough time there to uh, start slightly blending some of this yellow with the, with the purple at the top of the clouds just to show uh, the sunshine coming through the top of these clouds there a bit so uh the paint has tacked up enough and now I'm, that's all i'm doing is just going over it uh ever so slightly colors let the colors blend all right i don't want hard colors on uh on the clouds so i'm just letting some of it just blend together slightly if you find that it's blending too much or the base layer is coming out too much and, uh, and it's mudding the colors, stop. Don't continue. Let go of that part of the cloud or of that part of the painting. Work on something else. Let it tack up. And I would say like in an hour, you could come back to the painting. That's the beauty of oil. You could just come back to it in about an hour and then start doing the, the mid-tones as you wish without having any uh, difficulty of you know, uh, of mudding the picture by uh, lifting the bottom layers of the paint. The brush that you see me using here is a Princeton Polytip. Uh, very nice brush. 
very very nice brush when i use that for oil paint uh it just it's smooth i've tried other other brushes but this one in particular it's a very smooth and as, as far as spreading the paint and loading up the paint and when i uh when you try to blend beautiful brush i, I love it i would recommend anybody get that brush uh when you find it online, I think you can find it online at Jerry's Artorama or most, most places carry that brush. Um, and Princeton's makes pretty, pretty good brushes as well. So now I'm just trying to define this, uh, the yellow aspect of the cloud here. And I'm trying to make a little sun bursting right through those clouds towards the bottom of those clouds which is going to shine on the landscape. And uh, I had to be careful there because I noticed that even though I was adding more white, it was just blending to the back with the background. So I stopped that. So and what I did to compensate as well is just uh, make the halo around the sun a little bit more yellow in order to bring out the white part of the sun out a little bit more I, I hope that was not confusing uh, when I said that so and uh, now we're just gonna work on the landscape uh, remember the paint was thin so I'm able to paint over uh, that part I know some of the cloud colors went all the way down to uh, into the grass area but I'm able to go over it because the paint was thin enough and by using liquid, which added uh, the drying time to that, I'm able to go over it. Now, see, if I had used linseed oil, I would have had a hard time adding, you know, the, the background landscape because the paint would have just slid all over the place. I'd have to sit and wait for it to dry, which probably would have been the next day or so. And uh, that's the difference when you use uh, a dryer and when you don't use a dryer. So... Uh, you know, it all depends. Some people would like the, you know, the working time and it's just me if things have to drop. I'm an acrylic painter, so I'm used to things drying pretty quick and just jump into the next layer or so. But in oils, in order for me to do that, I have to use an alkyd, which, in other words, is a dryer to help me accelerate the paint. Now, as you can see, the background, I, it's a little bit more of a bluish tinge in the background uh, landscape as you as you can see because yellow and red are the first two colors that will disappear as you look into the distance all right so when you look at the distance things will be a little bit more bluer and uh, in color than what it actually is okay and that's what gives it you know this atmospheric feel so if you want to push something back add more blue and white and you will push the the whatever subject that you're trying to paint further back and gray it down and I did use a little bit of yellow ochre with the ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber to make that greenish blue color for um, for that background there So now, also I'm able to go over these grasses. Now that I laid out the dark, uh, I'm able to start painting over the grasses, but ever so slightly because uh, some parts of it was, was, you know, tacking up. Some parts of it were, you know, drying enough that I could add some of the greens to the grasses. Now... I had to be careful, okay, because not every part of it was dry. And as you can see, also what I did there, I was able to add darker tones to that grass. Even though that, that dark that I laid down was not completely black and dark, which is a good thing. You don't want to make it too dark right off the bat. I kind of keep it thin so that if I need some darker tones, in some odd places, I could just use ultramarine blue and burnt umber uh, and add darks here, dark pockets here and there to further give depth to the painting. 
And now I'm just blending uh, some of the shadows of the grasses into the water. And again, that part, I'm just letting it blend with the bottom layer. I have no problem if the bottom layer lifts and it makes it muddy because that's just a shadow line. And I'm fine with that. And this is what I meant earlier by, you know, if I'm going to put another layer on top, I'd have to put it thicker. And liquid is helping me do that. And I'm not trying to push liquid. I mean, you could use a Gamsol. Um, I'm not paid by liquid or, you know, I'm not trying to push the product. I'm just saying it's a good product and it does help in your painting. So. And that's the beauty. You could just work over, work over once the, the paint tacks up. So now we're going to go into the second stage of the painting. I let this dry for about 24 hours um, because the paint, I couldn't go any further with it. I'd have to almost use a palette knife to, you know, add additional colors to that, but which I did not want to do that. So, um, I had to wait for it to dry. I could have gone over it six hours later, but it was getting late. I said, well, I'm going to wait till morning, finish the rest of it. So now I'm just working on some of the darker areas, as you can see. And always the same color combo, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and alizarin crimson. Just further defining the painting. A little bit more and again as you can see that little capsule right under my uh, palette there that is liquid inside of that and I am using liquid from time to time because with these little layers I'm adding to it I want them to dry fast too so if just in case I have to add additional things uh, additional colors or additional subject whatever I can do that without a problem so Oil is fun, but you just have to respect some rules like the fat over lean, which means, you know, you put thicker lower, uh, layers over thinner layers. Otherwise, what's going to happen if you do the opposite, the thicker layers at the bottom will continue to move while the thin layers on top has already solidified, which will cause cracking. So you don't want that. All right. So now I'm just... Uh, Using my lighter color of the grass, I'm, gonna, I'm starting to get into the mid-tones to show some reflection of the sun, uh, the sunset on the grasses here. So I'm starting with the lighter colors, and eventually as I get to the base of these grasses, I'm going to go darker, because it would be harder if I did the darker colors first, and then trying to go lighter over it, because what I would happen is that the lighter colors would mix with the base layer, you know, while it's not dry and it will muddy up the color and I'd have to put thicker or thicker and thicker paint in order to achieve uh, what I want. So what I did is while the base layer is somewhat dry already, I started with the lighter color and then graduate to darker, darker tones as I get to the base of um, these grasses and let them blend upwards into the lighter color. And it works out a lot better that way. And it gives a nice transition. The other way around, it would have been just a muddied mess. And uh, just don't want to deal with that. Because then I have to wait for it to dry again. And then go back again on the painting. Just taking way too much time. So that's the other thing with the oils. You, you got to kind of plan out your painting here. Okay, It's not acrylics where I can do whatever I want. You know, uh, paint layer over layer. I don't like the color. Boom. Wait two minutes. I could change the color around. And make it what I want it to be. So, or you got to be a little bit more careful and plan out uh, your painting. Hence, why sometimes I like to paint more in acrylics than I do in oils. But there's something unbeatable about oils, about this blending and the softness and what you can do with it too, as well. So, I mean, you know, everybody got their thing, I guess. All right. So now we're just working a little bit more on the highlight 
of the grasses here. Just got to gray it down a little bit more and work on this tree a little bit here. And you notice how I grayed it down in order to give an impression that's further away and it's not so close to the bank of the grasses. And what will further illustrate that is when you're going to see me put this, uh, this shimmer of light over grass going across there. And that will separate the foreground and the background tree that you see me laying out there. That's going to help a lot. And so... From this point on, I'm going to let you watch and finish the rest of this painting and uh, watch how it all comes together. Because now I just pretty much gave you the basics of, or I should say the essence of the painting of how to start the process when not to mix and when to mix and when you have to let it dry and uh, so on and so forth. So from this point on, I'm going to let you watch the rest of the process of what I'm doing. And if you have any questions, you leave them in the comments and I will respond uh, as soon as I can. And if you have any questions about the materials that I use or paint or what have you, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. So enjoy the rest of the painting.